All right, ladies and gentlemen, Richard Taylor here once again, coming to cover the story of Mike Cox and his confidential informants. It seems now that the proverbial cats are out of the bag. Um, and shout out to the, the Old North for providing some of this information. But apparently, uh, the much maligned deputy, Mike Cox, uh, was in Raleigh Federal Court this Wednesday uh, for a bond hearing. Now, if you've been hiding under a rock in Goldsboro uh, and you didn't know that Mike Cox has been charged with uh, all types of federal indictment, uh, he was a uh, deputy, uh, sheriff deputy, who was involved in all types of drug use, drug trafficking, uh, extortion, robbery plotting, uh, you know, schemes, financial schemes, and everything under the sun. So he was arrested about two weeks ago. Uh, his indictment came out uh, probably about last week. You can find that indictment on justice.gov. But it details uh, his uh, unscrupulous activities uh, throughout his tenure uh, from about 2014 to the present, probably before then. But nevertheless, in that indictment, uh, the... Um, I guess the, the, the person who put out that indictment, uh, the federal government, would not identify uh, the quote-unquote confidential informants that Cox was working with. However, in his bond hearing, uh, which is Wednesday, uh, it says U.S. Attorney Dennis Duffy outed two men uh, who before the hearing was simply known as drug trafficker number one and drug trafficker number two. Now, uh, because of uh, this trial on Wednesday, uh, we now know the name of these two men. Uh, drug trafficker number one is one Theodore Lee. Uh, he's accused of drug trafficking, methamphetamine, cocaine, crack, fentanyl, oxycodone, heroin. I mean, he was doing it all, marijuana. Uh, you know, he, he was, he was, he was selling it all. Now, um, it doesn't say that if he's been convicted of any of those things. Um, but drug trafficker number two, uh, which is a gentleman I know, I know his family well, uh, they outed him as well. And drug trafficker number two is also, uh, one Renato Howard. Now, it says that he is a convicted drug dealer who is currently serving two 188-month sentences, which I didn't know. Um, you know, my heart goes out to him for, because that is definitely a long time. I can't even do the math in my head. Uh, that's at least 30 years, uh, 15 years apiece, in a federal, pros uh, federal prison. And he, in that first... Uh, indictment was labeled as drug trafficker number two. Now, in the first video I did, you can go back and watch it. I never mentioned any names. But one thing I did do was go and look up the, the incidents that they talked about in uh, the indictment. They, you know, they said, uh, like, like, this is just one that let me know uh, before I made the video that the person drug drug dealer number two uh, was how uh, because in the indictment it said on June 26 2017 Cox observed drug trafficker number two but in this article is, is Howell purchasing two ounces of cocaine um, and then so you can go and look up that event and it will tell you who was arrested on that day. But the most, the one um, I think that told me everything was when uh, the article said that uh, he was arrested on uh, on some date with his longtime girlfriend, and they got caught with I think he said two kilograms of cocaine. So of course I looked up that date. And once again, if you've been hiding on the rock, like I, I even I was in. In, in Virginia at that time that happened, but the streets talk. So I, I know what happened on that date. And so it didn't surprise me today when I get the information that, you know, the quote unquote drug trafficker number two uh, was Renato 
Howard. Now, once again, um, all of these are uh, allegations. Uh, evidently, he has been convicted of something because he is serving uh, that that sentence. Uh, but these um, these the, these situations uh, just bring to light a deeper issue uh, with the law enforcement. And best believe, uh, Mr. Howell and Mr. Lee are not the only ones around here cooperating with law enforcement. Let's get that straight. I've, I've, I, I, I've, I've just heard of certain situations, just like when I heard of uh, Mr. Howell getting caught with two kilograms and then he got caught, he got out and then got caught with four ounces more. It doesn't take a rocket science to scientists to know that hey you know something something must be going on you know um and there's a lot of others who who get caught and get out and everything but because there is no information because there's no paperwork because there's no um solidifying of their cooperation with police of course you know i won't say their name say their names or whatever but you know people once again talk you know, the streets, as they say, they talk. The streets be watching. So, um, you know, when you're involved in these type of things, um, the rules are definitely changing right now. And one thing I can say in Mr. Howell's defense, it says, you know, in 2000, I think, 17. 2017, let, let me pull up the correct date because I don't, I don't want to uh, say the wrong date. But I know it says one time that they stopped, they stopped Howell and his girlfriend and he was arrested for the cocaine. Here we go. I think this is it. Yeah. In 2016, Cox arrested drug trafficker two, which was Howell, they, they say his name, and his girlfriend, but he still refused to cooperate with Cox. So that lets me know that, you know, at first, Mr. Howell resisted the co cooperation uh, with the law enforcement. However, then it says in 2017, uh, he was detained in possession of four ounces of powder cocaine. It was only then that he agreed to cooperate. Um, and that's when he got his prosecution for those cases as this article put uh, for thwarted. So um, Cox never created a, an official case number for the drugs, which allowed you know Mr. Howell to go free, which once again, if I was Mr. Howell, I would be grateful for that. And once again, I don't know what's going, I don't, in, in this scenario, I don't know who's playing who, you know? Um, you know, fortunately, I'm not in that lifestyle, but the rules have, have have been blurred so much right now that I don't I don't I don't know if it would be good to be working with law enforcement and having him protect you from prosecution or having him tell you, um, you know, when the police are coming. And actually, um, we can go back to another part of the indictment where it says. Um, in, let's go back one more page here. It says in February, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me go back, let me go back here. Okay, yeah, so it says in, in February, uh, of, of 2019 or thereafter, uh, Howell was accused of shooting someone, right? And so and, and Cox called him and told him to go up to the shop where there was this lawyer waiting. And the lawyer's name, they put his name in the indictment. And, and my question is, well, why hasn't he been indicted? This lawyer's name is Worth Haithcock. Worth Haithcock. So this lawyer was in the presence of a gentleman who was suspected of, of doing, you know, some some crimes, and 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 Cox 
once again, called law enforcement and the, and the, 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 the deputies that were um, investigating the case and took up for him. Said, hey, no, nah, he was with me. He was FaceTiming all night watching the Duke and Carolina game. So, what, I mean, what, what, I, if I was in that position, I would love to have a police, uh, you know, take it up for me in that manner. Nevertheless, um, Cox arranged for Worth Haithcock to provide defense for um, Mr. Howell. Now, also, um, when they was looking for him, Haithcock told uh, Cox to tell Howell to lay low until he can meet, you know, with the proper people. So this whole thing reeks of corruption. Either lawyers, lawyers are corrupt. If you're if you're a lawyer, you don't supposed to be involved in that. You actually supposed to, you know, in my opinion, you know, you were supposed to call the police and let them know uh, where um, the suspected assailant was. So. Um, this this article goes on to talk about how, you know, once again, Cox gave uh, Howell a tip uh, for, for a fellow drug dealer. And um, the drug dealer's house actually be, uh, got robbed a while, uh, uh, about 10 days later, it says. 10 days later, the drug dealer's house got robbed. And they said that, that the robbery was so violent that there were elements of torture. Uh, there were pistol whipping and duct taping of juveniles and slamming a girl's face into a stove with the burner on. And once again, Cox facilitated, if not, you know, actually planned uh, that, that robbery. Um, as well as, you know, watching, uh, once again, uh, the name was in the article, Howell purchased two ounces of cocaine and then coming back and stopping Howell, seizing the cocaine, but then giving him the money back from, you know, drug purchase money and saying that it was a controlled purchase. So um, this was, you know, this is just a situation that just reeks of um, just a whole lot of foolishness um this one particular situation like like i said he he shot he was how allegedly shot a cooperating informant and the cooperating informant so we have allegedly one informant shooting another informant and you know the other informant called the police and tell them it's the other informant who shot me so um this this whole situation just is a reason why anybody with a sound mind would stay out of the drug game because as we see there's definitely no honor among thieves and also there is no honor uh, among police as well now this powell guy excuse me theodore lee uh which is the drug trafficker number one he was the one who was providing um Cox with most of his uh, pills. You know, it's, 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 it's in the indictment that Cox was heavily involved in, you know, drug use himself. So um, this other guy, he was involved in, you know, making sure basically Cox got his fix. Um And we can go on, let me see, um, talk about Lee actually uh, having a GPS on his car in which, you know, that's when the FBI started following him. He went so far as going to Cox's house to drop off the pills. And in one part of the investigation, um... Uh, one of the members of Cox's family uh, referred to um, Lee as a nigger. You know, he said, look, you tell this nigger to get me something or I'll fix him too. Something of that nature. Um, so all of this came out in the bond hearing, which was Wednesday. As I mentioned, they had redacted the drug trafficker number one and drug trafficker number two in the 
original federal indictment. Now, because of, I guess, the, the wanting to prove the fact that Cox needs to stay in jail, they had to actually bring the names of the people that he was involved with, along with their alleged crimes, to show um, the judge that, you know, these are the type of people that he was dealing with, these are the type of pe things that he was doing, and he needs to stay uh, in jail. Um, Hart Miles, uh, which is a partner at Cheshire, Parker, and Snyder. Hart Miles is the one that's representing Cox, and he represented him Wednesday. And this is a statement, once again, that just continues to muddy the waters. He said that despite the absence of official paperwork, Howell and Lee were informants. <laughs> and he said, just because Cox allegedly bought illegally obtained pain pills doesn't make him a drug trafficker. Now, what this lawyer is saying is, if you're a confident dental informant, you're supposed to have that on the book. Like, if you're working with a confidential informant, the uh, informant, Cox was supposed to have this on the books with his superiors. Like, look, hey, this guy's a confidential informant. You know, let him slide or whatever. But Cox didn't have that. So that makes it, once again, more murkier. And once I don't know if Howell or Lee's charges are related to anything they did with Cox. But if they are, they should be seeking reprieve. Uh, from the justice system because of, you know, his involvement. And once again, I, I, I'll say once again in defense of Howell that it said he allegedly or, or, or originally refused to cooperate. So how do we know that Cox didn't lean on him in some form or even threaten him or, you know, whatever the case may be, or once again entice him with the possibility of, look, you know, all these charges are going to go away, which they eventually did. Uh, according to the indictment in the article. So, um, you know, I guess, you know, both of them were playing their hand uh, until I guess, you know, all the cards ran out. And I think now the cards have ran out uh, for Mr. Cox. And he wanted, uh, he's now trying to avoid um, going to jail. Um, you know, the, the prosecutor... Uh, talked about the damage that Cox has done to Wayne County and the reputation of lawmen. And and one, one witness said that Cox said that he would never go to federal prison. He wouldn't be taken alive. Um, but most importantly, they said that he blurred the lines between the good guys and the bad guys. They, he said he literally gave a golden ticket to all these drug dealers, Duffy said. He took his badge and used it as a weapon, and it staggers the imagination. So, long story short, at this trial, this Wednesday, um, the Judge Gates, uh, he refused to grant the um, deputy, Mike Cox, any bail. Um, he talked about Cox's willingness to put his family in danger and, you know, his use of, you know, pain pills and things like that. Um, they said that Cox will remain in custody until his trial date. And one good thing for Cox is that they are saying that he will also be in protected custody, which, of course, would be obvious because of the many people that he has placed in jail or, you know, has had things, um, unscrupulous dealings with, you know, that's where, you know, police probably go, you know, when you go to jail. So uh, this article, once again, I'm reading it from the New North. So all of this is public knowledge. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm reporting on the story from an unbiased point of view. I hate to do the story because I know, um, you know, I know one of the alleged informants. And, you know, informing is, is, is such a stigma, you know, you, a stigma in our community, especially when you're in, you know, the drug game and things like that. 
that, you know, that, that, that leaves such a stain on your reputation, but you would almost have to be blind to not know, you know, that, that something was going on in that regard when an individual is getting, you know, constantly arrested for drugs and, you know, being right out and operating with impunity. And then there's others, once again, if there's, if there's information, if y'all got paperwork on any others, that 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 who are you know who who are operating in this manner? Then people need to know because uh, the article did say at some points he provided sensitive information to law enforcement. So we, when when they're talking about sensitive information, that means you know information about others who may be doing this or others who may be doing that. So he was alleged to have done that. So people need to know. So you can call me direct nine one nine five eight seven 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 eight two. Because, you know, even if you're in that game, which I, 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 I still can't imagine who would still want to be in that game at this age, you know, at 40 something, when we know the repercussions, when we know the possibilities, when we know all the hurt and pain that, you know, this game has caused others throughout the years. But most importantly, there are way too many other ways to get money these days. You know, to be to be running around here risking twenty or thirty years at the age of forty, or even at the age of thirty. You know, um, God forbid if 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 Mr. Howard doesn't get any reprieve for those sentences. You know, I think I I, I don't know if he's forty or not, but that's thirty. That's seventy years old when he went when and if you know he if if those charges stick or if that sentence stick, he will get out. And uh, they didn't mention the other guy the lead charges, so that's. Um, or his sentence, so I don't know what he's facing. But basically, this is public record, so I'm not, you know, I, I, I'm not saying anything that is not online. Like, I'm literally reading this information off an article online. So, um, this is public information, and I'm just commenting on it. I'm just giving a com commentary on the story because, you know, the main thing, once again, is the law enforcement here. You know, and I and I think that you know, if, if anybody is uh, truly at fault, it's the law enforcement. Once again, we don't know what transpired behind the scenes. These are only two individuals that they caught him with. Imagine how many more, or how many other underhanded, uh, despicable things that he has done over the years. But most importantly, uh, the article once again behind the badge talks about the head honcho. He said, look, it's, it's, it said, it's time we hear from Larry Pierce now. Larry Pierce is, of course, the sheriff who I think he came to power in 2014, if I'm not mistaken, don't quote me. But that is when these things started going on. So there is no way that you can have this small of a town and this that small of an office with all these things going on and you don't know anything. You know, once again, I I know these things, and I'm not in the office. So there's definitely a corruption within that 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 office and law enforcement in general that needs to be addressed. Like 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 I mentioned before, at this point, we just gotta throw the whole the whole department away. Cause like I said, if you have a snake in a bag of flour, right? And you got that snake, and it's a poisonous snake in a bag of flour, and you somehow get that snake out of the flour, you don't say, okay, good, the snake is out, and I'm going to put some chicken in this flour and batter. No, you throw the whole thing away, right? So that's what I'm saying about these situations when there's been so much corruption and so much, um, you know, taintedness in this office. There is that there, everything has to be revamped. You know, I remember my man Super Day was running for sheriff back in the days. I I was thinking about that 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 why I said I should run for sheriff. I know how to I know how to you know I know what's going on. But you know, nevertheless, you know we can't let Sheriff Pierce off the hook because these are his underlings. You know, these are these are the, the you know he is their superior, so he's supposed to have complete control or at least some type of super supervisory force over them to keep these things from happening. So um, I just wanted to, 
you know, come on, somebody sent me this article, sent me, you know, the photos of uh, the, the, the two men who are outed. And once again, I will say um, that there are so many others, uh, once again, in this in this community, in this game. Like, the rules have changed. You know, this is, you know, gone are the days when there were honor amongst these. There may be some honorable uh, men out there in this game, but, you know, I, w I wouldn't trust. I would be scared to put my hands on any type of substance around these guys right here because as soon as they get caught, you know, they cops put the pressure. They asking where they sign at, you know, like my man Sue Surf said. But um, yeah, man, it's um, it's 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 very disturbing on all ends that you know we got law enforcement working it working that way. We got street cats working with the law, you know, all of those things. And once again, I can't I can't I can't even fault him because like the way. The way he set up, he might have been benefited from the situation. Like I said, not if you get caught with two kilos and you don't go to jail, hey, I, I, I won in that scenario. But just as they do in most cases, after they finish using you or after they finish, you know, um, using you for their purpose, then they cast you away. Or, you know, want some, like, 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 like the Goldsboro Police Department wanted to investigate Howard one time and they said, that they couldn't because because of Cox protection, they felt like he was untouchable. And so when Cox got uh, retired or retired, you know, that's when they were able to execute warrants on uh, Mr. Howell and I, I guess execute the charges that uh, he is now serving time for. But, you know, once again, my heart goes out to him and his family because you know, I know him, and he's always been a solid guy to me. I can't, you know, I can't speak for for anybody else or what he what he had, what he has done or has had to do in this situation. You know, once again, I, I, I he's always like I, I seen him in Virginia Beach one day. I was working at the hotels. He come around the corner, Rick. You know what I'm saying? So I had my books at the hotel. He bought my books and stuff. So I can't say anything about him on a personal level um, to you know, disparage his character or besmirch his character. But, you know, in this situation, I don't want to have all the facts. Uh, hopefully the facts will come out in trial. And hopefully, once again, if, if, if he's been dealing with this guy, this guy had him in some type of chokehold, you know, I hope, hope, hope he'll receive some reprieve, you know, from whatever, whatever the law allows. But nevertheless, we're going to keep up with this story. You know, Mike, Mike Cox is still in jail. You know, I, I, I hope he... Hope he stays in that PC because I, I I know they gonna be on his top paws, you know when when if 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 he ever get out there in population, you know it's it's gonna be uh you know it's it's, it's gonna be every man for itself out there. But I, I doubt he'll he'll ever make it to population. But you know and, and and I hope he'll even make it to a prison sentence because once again you know we see how the law sometimes works in the favor of its own. So. Uh, we're going to keep up with this story. I thank y'all for tuning in. And, um, yeah, we just, um, yeah, if you haven't watched all of the details of everything that has happened uh, with the indictment, go go back and watch, you know, the the, uh, the federal indictment video I did, which, break down, which breaks down each individual case uh, of, of corruption uh, that, uh, Cox was involved in. But peace and blessings, much love to the family. Y'all be out. Peace.